Have you been looking for that special accent for your yard? A feature that adds relaxing sound and captivating movement to your landscape? Well, you've found it. Handmade of solid copper, Atlantic's beautiful copper spillway bowl has a warm, traditional look that will mellow over time as a rich, natural patina develops. And it's easy to install. In this video, we'll show you how to build this complete water feature step by step from preparing the base and building the structure to installing the plumbing and capping the columns with only one exception. For the video, we dry stacked the block. You'll be gluing the blocks together with construction adhesive following manufacturer's guidelines. We recommend you watch the video all the way through then take it outside with you. Go ahead and pause at each step, we won't mind. Start to finish with the wall stones close by and no interruptions. The installation should take two people less than a day to complete. You'll need tools for the layout, mark out paint, a tape measure, two foot and four foot levels, and a straight two by four. For the excavation, a wheelbarrow, shovel, and tamper. For the stone, a lump hammer or mallet, and a grinder or chisel. For the plumbing, a large wrench, a screwdriver or nut driver, and tubing cutters or a PVC saw. Most manufacturers recommend setting their stones on a 4-inch bed of tamped sand, stone dust, or screenings you'll need about eight cubic feet. Atlantic's flexible basins are sized to accommodate the most common engineered stone dimensions. For this installation, we chose four by eight by 12 inch blocks, but there are many other options. For this installation, you will need 166 blocks and you'll need to make three cuts. Wall stones like these allow for creativity. We set some stones on edge, doubled others up, and used a contrasting color for the caps. Let's get started. Prepare the base for the project according to manufacturer's guidelines. Most recommend a four inch deep base of level tamp sand or stone screenings. You'll need at least a five foot by six foot area so there's room to work. Level and tamp the base material until your footprints no longer make an imprint. Then go back and re-level the base. After carefully laying out guidelines in the base material, start laying the blocks at the front and center, building around to the back. To make this feature more interesting, we set some of the blocks on edge, which required building the first two courses simultaneously. We put in the front and sides first, leaving the back wall to be measured and marked out before installing. Measure between the side walls to make sure the walls are exactly 48 inches apart, adjusting as needed. Bear in mind your four foot level may not be exactly four feet long. Then, measure from the front wall back and mark out a guideline for the base of the back wall at exactly 24 inches. Using your marks as a guide, set the base blocks of the back wall, adjusting them to fit as needed. Verify that the space between the walls measures exactly 24 inches by 48 inches. That's how large the space has to be to ensure that the flexible basin will fit snugly without wrinkles. Then finish the second course. After the second course is laid, check to make sure that the blocks are aligned, level, and plumb. Measure the diagonals. If the diagonals are equal, then the corners are all square. If not, adjust as needed. Continue setting the third and fourth courses of block. We alternated the flat blocks with blocks on edge, just to keep things interesting. That left an odd space in the front, which we cut an eight inch block to fill. Let's get this project moving. Cut a wall stone in half to make two six inch pieces and set one in the corner of the third course to leave a six inch wide space centered at nine inches from the inside corner 
as shown. This is where the plumbing will pass through the wall, concealed below water level. To finish the fourth course, we cut a stone to 3 inches and 9 inches to allow a whole stone to span the space later. Now we're just about ready to mount the bulkhead fitting to the flexible liner and install the liner in the basin. Take a couple of minutes to even up any stones that might be out of line before continuing. Before starting the plumbing, unpack the flexible basin, the 12 inch flange, and the bulkhead fitting. Ensure that the base the flexible liner will be sitting on is clean, smooth, and free of debris. The weight of the water could damage the liner if there are any sharp objects in the base material. If needed, a layer of geotextile fabric can be added to protect the flexible basin. Remove the reverse threaded nut on the bulkhead fitting, turning clockwise. Remove the rigid slip ring, leaving the soft rubber gasket in place. Insert the bulkhead fitting into the pre-punched cutout from the inside out through the hole. Slip the flange over the threads of the fitting, then reinstall the reverse threaded nut, this time turning counterclockwise to tighten. Tighten by hand, adjusting the nut so that the points of the nut are aligned vertically up and down. Then, use a wrench to give the hexagonal nut a final sixth turn. When fully tightened, the top and bottom of the nut should be parallel to the top of the block. This will lock the nut in place between the block courses. If the nut isn't aligned in this manner, the bulkhead fitting will not sit properly between the blocks. Install the preformed flex basin in the enclosure, ensuring that the bulkhead fitting assembly fits into the space between the blocks of the third course. Cap the space with the one hole block to finish the fourth course. Smooth the flex basin into the corners and set blocks on the flaps to temporarily hold the flex basin in place. Next, apply silicone to the threads of the small T assembly and screw it into the bulkhead fitting. Temporarily align the side outlet of the T sideways for easier access to the cord seal fitting that will be inserted into the T next. Once the cord seal fitting is installed, the T will need to be realigned to point the side outlet downwards. This is a great way to hide the pump cord, but it requires special equipment. Atlantic's cord seal fitting allows you to pass a pump or light cord through the plumbing and back out again without leaking. We're using the side outlets of two T's, each fitted with a cord seal fitting, so we won't need to see the pump cord at all. Disassemble the cord seal fitting. Slip the rubber gasket around the pump cord. Then loosely reassemble the cord seal fitting around the gasket. Smooth sides in towards the rubber and the halves with the molded nuts towards the T. Be sure to align the inner and outer halves at 90 degrees to each other. Then just start the screws, don't tighten them yet. Push the cord seal fitting into the T. For the neatest installation, slide the rubber coupling on the pump discharge over the T and snug up the pump cord, pulling any excess back through the bulkhead fitting. Then tighten the screws of the cord seal fitting firmly, but not excessively alternating from one side to the other for even tightening. The gasket will expand around the cord and into the T, creating a leak-proof seal. Reorient the side outlet of the T and the cord seal fitting downwards and tighten the rubber coupling to complete the inner plumbing. Begin filling the basin, working any wrinkles on the floor out to the corners. As the water rises, pull up on the flaps to eliminate any wrinkles on the walls. Then test the flaps for fit by folding them down flush onto the top of the walls. If there are wrinkles, trim at the corners so that the flaps fold down flush. 
Stop filling when the water reaches the bottom of the bulkhead fitting or it will spill over. Now let's talk about gluing the flaps and the caps. The flaps leave the outer edge of the block wall uncovered so you can apply a continuous bead of adhesive to secure the caps. Apply a blob of adhesive into each cutout to secure the flaps. To eliminate wrinkles, set each block to overhang a little more to the inside, then tighten the liner as you slide each back until they overhang evenly. To avoid additional cuts, we set the front and side caps in line with the wall below. Pass the cord through a male adapter, thread side first. Apply silicone and thread the male adapter into the bulkhead fitting. Cut an 8 inch length of pipe, pass the cord through, and glue the pipe into the male adapter. Pass the cord through the long axis of a T, as shown, and glue that to the pipe. At this point, you can install the second cord seal fitting. Remove the four screws to disassemble the fitting, slip the gasket around the cord, and loosely reinstall the inner and outer halves with the screw heads to the outside following the instructions included with the cord seal fitting. Be sure to align the inner and outer halves at 90 degrees to each other. Before tightening, slip the fitting into the T and snug up the cord. Then tighten the screws, alternating between opposites until the fitting is snug in the T and around the cord. Finally, glue a four foot piece of inch and a half flex PVC in the side outlet of the T oriented upward. We'll cut this pipe to final length when we attach it to the copper bowl. Check to make sure the area behind the reservoir wall is still tamped and level and build the back of the double wall that will conceal the pipe. Start with the end blocks next to the columns turned 90 degrees from the back wall to create the four inch space for the plumbing. Add a second block turn sideways under the bulkhead fitting to avoid a cut. In the third course, leave a space for the cord and for access to the cord seal fitting for future pump replacement. Turn a fourth block sideways to accommodate the space you created. Continue with the fourth course. When you reach the height of the capped reservoir wall, cap the back wall also. Use a cut stone near the center to allow the pipe to pass. Carefully center four blocks on the caps of the double wall to create the back column around the pipe. For aesthetic effect, you can vary the orientation of the blocks in the same way as the other walls. Continue with a second and third row of blocks, but do not glue down the front block of the third row. You'll need to leave it loose to attach the copper bowl. Cap all three columns, checking to make sure that the capstones overhang the columns equally on all four sides, but do not glue the front caps of the center column. The center column will need a single block up to 10 inches in length to accommodate the pipe. Set the copper bowl upside down on a piece of cardboard or styrofoam packing to finish the plumbing. Apply silicone to the threads of the included plug and install the plug in the off-center inlet at the bottom of the bowl. 
cut a four inch long piece of pipe and glue it into the center male adapter. Install with silicone in the center inlet at the bottom of the bowl. Place the rubber coupling over the short section of pipe and tighten to secure it. Now remove the unglued stones and cut the supply pipe back to the bottom of the cap course. Carefully set the copper bowl on the remaining caps and slide the rubber coupling over the supply pipe. Align the copper bowl and securely tighten the coupling. Replace the loose blocks and top off the reservoir to complete the installation. Now, plug in the pump and enjoy your beautiful new Atlantic water feature. Congratulations on completing your beautiful Atlantic Copper Spillway Bowl water feature. With no organics in the water, maintenance will be a breeze. Just net out any leaves or clippings on a regular basis and use our Refresh Color Falls and Fountain Treatment weekly to keep the water clear and fresh. If organic issues do arise, we have the answer. You can use our EcoSolve treatment as needed or install a Triton ionizer to the plumbing behind the wall to keep organics at bay. All are available wherever our products are sold. Winterizing is a breeze too. Just unscrew the standpipe and remove it to drain most of the water out of the bowl. What remains can freeze without damage. To remove the pump, all you'll need is a screwdriver for the rubber coupling and the cord seal fitting. That's it. So now sit back and enjoy your beautiful new Atlantic water feature.